We are Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14, presented by Bearded Iris. We are previewing Alabama's NCAA tournament game with Maryland. That is on TBS. If you're there in person, it's in Birmingham. It's at 840 Central on Saturday night. Alabama is about a 7.3 point favorite, according to the predictive computers, which are Ken Pomeroy, Bart Chorvik. ESPN's BPI and Jeff Sagarin, the Crimson Tide have a 76% chance of winning. Alabama had an interesting game with Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Alabama won without too much problem, despite getting nothing in terms of points from Brandon Miller. Uh, the Tide advance and survive, which was totally expected. And now a Maryland team, which got a hard-fought win over West Virginia after trailing early, Blake. Yep. Um, I mean, look, the obvious discussion here turns to, to to Brandon Miller's, you know, availability. They they obviously talked about wanting to limit his minutes against um, Corpus Christi, and you know, I think it's that's probably easier to do than it it would be in in this game and in, in a survive and advance scenario. So, um, so yeah, I mean that I think that's at least worth discussing. I mean, I, I they've made it clear it's not a significant injury. Um, and obviously they were going to be very cautious with it, uh, entering the first game, but you know, yeah, things are a little different now because you're playing a Maryland team that we talked about. It was a team that kind of struggled to win games away from home. And, um, you know, the teams they had beat were not great teams, uh, you know, at least in the, from about December on now they did get those, they got a win against Miami back in November and, um, and all that, but. So, so I think it's, you know, now you've given the Purdue also. Yeah. Th- but they didn't do it away from home, right? Right. So right. But yeah, but so, the big win nonetheless. Yeah, no, I, I'm making the yeah, I was making the point that when you looked at their their home away splits, this is a team that has lost, you know, <laughs> a lot of games away from home. Like so I think that's that's at least worth noting. But but yes, now that they've built a little confidence after getting down early against West Virginia. Looked like West Virginia was going to just run away with that game early, but Maryland rallied, um, got, you know, a good, basically, you know, leaned on their starting five, which we see coaches do that a lot in these kind of scenarios, right? It's just, you lean on the guys that can get you there and uh, kind of put you in that position. And, and those guys stepped up and, and made plays to, to make that rally. And, um, you know, they, they shot the ball pretty well, got to the free throw line. And yeah, now you play Alabama, who's just a different, a different beast whenever, you know, Brandon Miller is healthy and, um, you know, you just, you know what you're running into when you play Alabama there, the offense still gets a lot of the the attention, but this is just a tremendous defensive team. And I still don't know if we're talking about their defense enough because they're just so good on that side of the floor and they will force Maryland to take some tough shots. And I think, you know, that that's going to be a big theme in this game. Is there a place where you think Maryland gives Alabama issues? Um, I mean, I, I know this sounds simple, but it's just, I mean, is Maryland just, can they hit shots? Like, I mean, that, that I know, again, that's like, that's the name of the game, but to beat Alabama, Chris, like, let's look at the teams that have beaten Alabama, right? I mean, it's outside of, Tennessee and A&M who play a different way, right? I mean, it's, you know, the Tennessee game, we we pretty much expected. If that was going to be in Tennessee's favor, it was going to be a lower-scoring defensive-type game. And, you know, but that's because Tennessee is just a, a an elite, elite defensive team. Maryland's a pretty good defensive team. And I think that maybe it is. It's the combination of hitting shots, and, and it's also Maryland making this their game. And, and what do I mean by that? <laughs> I mean – not letting Alabama get out and, and run because let's think about some other teams too, that have given Alabama issues like a and Chris, what kind of pace do they play at? They play a little more of a, you know, half court type pace where they're going to really grind you defensively. Um, think about another team that gave Alabama an issue, not necessarily, you know, the, what would that have been the third time around, but the second time around. Um, and that was Mississippi State, right? I mean, Mississippi State and Tuscaloosa, you know, that game was what 66 63. Um, 
it was more of a Mississippi State type game in terms of how that game played out. I think for Maryland, that's what it comes down to. If they're going to give Alabama issues, it's making it's taking away possessions. <laughs> you don't want to give Alabama, you know, a gazillion possessions in this game. If you do, you're in trouble because they're going to capitalize. Um, but I think it's it's just defensively, right? I mean, look at Ken Baum, Chris. I know you've got it pulled up. <laughs> look at what Maryland does to teams defensively from an average offensive possession length. I mean, do you see that number? seconds. <laughs> yeah, so there's only one what one team in the country that plays yeah. – that grinds teams to a slower tempo on that end of the floor than Maryland. And that's Northern Kentucky. <laughs> How about that? So, oh. um, who did that Which against Houston? Some issues. We saw. Yes. So, um, I, so, so, yeah, like all that to say it's the combination of you got to make shots against Alabama to beat them. There's no other way because you just fully expect them to hit shots. That They're not going to – go eight minutes without scoring. Like <laughs> they're going to make shots. So you have to hit shots, but I also think you have to play the game the way you want to play it because otherwise I don't think that's a good recipe for, for Maryland. Yeah. Alabama. I mean, I thought without Miller playing Alabama still got plenty of firepower shot the three ball. Well, yesterday, which it tends to do a decent amount. Look, I, I just, you mentioned the, Maryland away from home. I think Maryland was two and eight in, in true road games and and not great on neutral floors either. Um, did get a win yesterday against West Virginia on a neutral floor, but I, I just think Alabama, especially playing in Birmingham, that's going to be a home game for the Tide. I, I don't see Maryland pulling an upset here. Well, I mean, like I said, if if Maryland's going to pull the upset, I think it's because it's a sixty something, you know. 64 62 type game um Easier i think said that's done yeah. yeah right and, and doing that against alabama now doing that against alabama with a limited brandon miller maybe a little bit easier than than doing it against alabama as a full strength but we don't know that like we said it doesn't sound like it's significant it it sounded like that was intentional his usage in that game so i don't think you can just you know rush to conclusions and say well he's not going to be he's only gonna play 10 minutes in this game or something like we have no idea and um so so yeah i mean i don't think you can go that far but it's just a, it's just a different animal, right? Like even against the West Virginia team, that's been pretty good on offense this season. You know, that's what Maryland did though. I mean, you saw that game, right? Like it was Maryland. That was more of a Maryland type game um, in terms of how it played out. And, um, you know, like I said, that they, they, they did what, you know, eight, nine seeds need to do. And we talked about like Auburn, right. As a parallel. Auburn got production out of their guys. Like their guys stepped up and, and produced. It wasn't just one or two guys, it was multiple guys. And you saw that from Maryland, whether it was Reese, whether it was Hart, you know, Scott, Young, Kerry, like their starting five, they all stepped up and gave them a little something. Um, and and I think you've got to have that type of balance to beat Alabama. You cannot just rely on one guy. Um, you've got to have everybody clicking to to beat a team like Alabama that just can be so good at their best. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna I'm going to certainly pick Alabama here. Um, but I do think it's at least worth noting, you know, if you are trying to find a path to success for Maryland, which I know a lot of Alabama fans will be watching this and they're not interested in finding a path to success for Maryland. But um, if you are, if you're a Maryland fan watching this and the, the path, it, it really is just, you know, taking good shots because Alabama will force you to take bad shots just based on how they play on the defense. I mean, think about it, Chris. We, we saw them up close in Nashville the physicality Alabama plays with just the length that they have. I mean, how many times that they just force the other team, which I guess the two, we saw them against Mississippi state, Missouri, and obviously a and they held all three of those teams under 63 points. I mean, they just, I would love to know if, if, which I'm sure, you know, the stat is kept by staffs and that kind of stuff. But if, if you had a bad shot chart, how many bad shots did they force probably from those three teams? It's probably, Oh man! You know, I mean, they, they've got such reach, length, right? Yeah, I between mean. between Gurley, Betty Ako, Clowney, Miller. I mean, they're, they're just sometimes they'll sit back and and just in that half court offense, it's it's hard to find room to get off a shot with over all those arms. Yeah, and I think that's that's important here um, because, like we said, you, you almost need the the perfect combination to beat a team like Alabama. And if you look at the teams that have done it this season, you can either do what Gonzaga and Oklahoma did, right? <laughs> Which is just shoot the lights out and have one of your best offensive games of the season. That's a formula. 
you can do what UConn did, which what did UConn do, Chris? UConn just out physical Alabama. I mean, they just pushed them around. They were very physical in that game, got to the free throw line, um, forced a lot of turnovers. Like that's another recipe to, to beat Alabama. And then we said the other option is kind of what A&M and Tennessee did, which was kind of slow the game down, grind it out a bit, make Alabama grind on every single offensive possession and win it that way. So there's your, there's your formula. Easier said than done <laughs> to beat Alabama. Um, so I, I'm going to pick Alabama, but again, it is certainly worth watching kind of Brandon Miller's availability uh, in terms of how many minutes he plays uh, in this game. Okay. He's Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee. We're Southeastern 14 presented by Bearded Iris. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. It costs you nothing. It's more like a follow and hit the like button that helps our analytics, helps us get paid, helps fund the Caffeine and the cold medicine, both of which I need a lot of right now. My goodness. Mm. Uh, mm. Having a cold in tournament time sucks. But anyway, all right. Thank you for watching us. We are going to be back to review this one, however it turns out, to preview Alabama's next game in the tournament. If there is a next game after Maryland, again, thank you for watching. We're Southeastern 14. We'll see you again soon.